Shalom. Today we continue studying commandments of Yeshua and we will talk about a very interesting commandment when Yeshua says, Beseech the Lord of the harvest. This is something which is found in Matthew chapter 9. Let me remind us that previously we found many interesting and important things, particularly we should ask for our righteousness and do it constantly. This is what Yeshua commanded us to do. This is what is very, very important. This is an essential thing. We should choose the narrow gates. That's what we found. And doing brings blessings. This is what we found together. And here we have Yeshua's teaching. The crowds. When he saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Let us select the key words here and pay close attention to them. First of all, we see that Yeshua, we read, he saw the crowds. The crowds, they would not come from the middle of nowhere. No, they lived in their villages. They were real people. Why did Yeshua see the crowds? Because he invited them. He involved them. They were seeking for something important, for something which they were able to find in him. And then we find that something was wrong with the people. Look at this, because they were harassed. What is that? In Greek, it sounds like skula. And this verb is translated as to harass or to trouble. So those people were harassed and troubled. And we are not told what troubled those people. However, as a result... They were absolutely helpless. So as you can see, those people are following Yeshua, but they are still troubled and helpless. And these words, they echo the words of Moses. In Numbers chapter 27, verses 15 through 18, we find amazing words. Moses spoke to Adonai, saying, May Adonai, God of the spirits of all flesh, Appoint a man over the community to go out and come in before them, who will lead them out and bring them out so that the people of Adonai will not be like sheep without a shepherd. Adonai said to Moses, Take Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Ruach, and lay your hand on him. So, as you can see, without a leader, people look like sheep without a shepherd. Those people needed a strong leader. And at that time, Yeshua would not be able to become their king. These words echo the words of Ezekiel. Ezekiel says in chapter 34, verse 5, They were scattered for lack of a shepherd, and they became food for every beast for the field, and were scattered. He repeats, scattered, two times. Yeshua could not become the king. However, he felt compassion. So he sees those crowds, and we highlighted those things. They were harassed. They were troubled. They were helpless. And what do we see next? We see that the harvest is ready. Yeshua continues. Then he said to his disciples, and here is the continuation, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Yeshua made a powerful statement. He said, the harvest is plentiful. In Greek, terismos is the act of harvesting or the time of harvesting. 
who is ready to be harvested, people who follow Yeshua and who feel powerless. If you do not follow Yeshua, if you are not seeking for him, you will not be harvested. If you feel powerful, again, you will not be harvested. And in this story we see someone is following Yeshua, someone feels powerless, and such people fit the kingdom of God. Such people are about to enter the kingdom. The act of harvesting, it's another possible translation. Uh, the act of harvesting or the time of harvesting. The act of harvesting points to the last events. In other words, the last harvesting as an act, it's about the last things. Harvesting means gathering people for the eschatological kingdom, for the final kingdom of God, where God himself will be the ultimate and the eternal king. And the time of harvesting points to the last day events. It emphasizes the shortness of the life. Typically, the harvest workers are angels in the Bible, not humans. And this points out to the fact that this is God who works. I met many people, many ministers who tried to invent new flyers, who tried to invent new ways of involving people. Yes, it's very good. But if God doesn't involve, people will not come. And here we see that People were following not other people but Yeshua and they were seeking something. And he, God, and only he decides how to draw people to him and whom to send in order to harvest. We are just assistants of God and his angels. Interestingly, we find a very important discussion in the Mishnah. Rabbi Tarfon says... The day is short, the work formidable, the workers lazy, the wages high, the employer impatient. He would say, it's not your job to finish the work, but you are not free to walk away from it. I like this discussion and this discussion contributes a lot. As you can see... People, even 2,000 years ago, would be concerned about finishing the work, about some global things. I met many persons who would share with me their global concerns. This discussion from the Mishnah exactly highlights this point. It's not your job to finish the work. But, even though it's not your job, you are not free to walk away from it. In other words, the manager is in charge of finishing the work. God is in charge. And you have your own part. And you should pray for the, for the workers of the harvest. Now we should return to the previous topics. We talked about asking. We talked about praying. We talked about asking for the spiritual needs. And Yeshua commanded us to ask about our spiritual needs. And here he wants us to ask for the harvesters. Let us read the text. This text about beseeching the Lord. Therefore Yeshua says in verse 38. Therefore he says, Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send out workers into his harvest field. Yeshua talks about sending the workers. Maybe those workers are angels. Maybe those workers are other people who are converted. But the field still needs the workers. Therefore, he says, pray or beseech. Why should we do that? Because God knows better. God knows people. Yeshua says, pray, pray about those people who need the truth, who are troubled, who are powerless. And this is a very practical and important topic because 
This is about success of our work. Do we want to see our ministry successful? Do we want to experience joy? Do we want to be in Yeshua's covenant? If your answers are yes, then pray for success of our work and do it regularly. Your congregations will thrive and be successful. This is a commandment of Yeshua. This is a part of the new covenant.